He told in example number four to evaluate the integral cos raised to power six x dx. So you cannot integrate it with a power. So when the power is greater than two, you use the Moivre's theorem, isn't it? So from the Moivre's theorem, what do we have? We have here we have x. So from the Moivre's theorem, if you have two cos two cos two cos n theta is z n plus one over z n, isn't it? Then two j sine n theta is equals to z n minus one over z n. So in our case, theta is x, isn't it? So where there is theta, you put you put x, isn't it? Then what do we want to expand cos? So where there is cos, you say when n is equals to one, when you put one where n is, it means two cos x is equals to z plus one over one over z, isn't it? When n is one, because we are interested in the cos, that the cos is what we deal with. If the hour was addressed to persist, then the sign is what we deal with, isn't it? Are we together? Okay? So, from there you now see cos raised to power 6 x. What do you have? You have, there you have 2. From here you have 2 cos x is equal to what? Z plus 1 over 2 cos x you found is Z plus 1 over Z. So you want cos raised to power 6, meaning you raise both sides of the equation to power 6. To power 6, isn't it? You raise both sides of the equation to power? To power 6. So you see 2 raised to power 6 is 64, isn't it? Is 64. Cos x raised to power 6 is cos raised to power 6x. You are done with that? With the left hand side of the equation, isn't it? Then you move to the right hand side of the equation. When they have power 6 in binomial, it means you have 7 terms, isn't it? So 7 terms, when power 6 you have 7 terms, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, isn't it? 7 times. Then the 7 times, the coefficients. What are the coefficients when the power is 7? Give me the coefficients. It's 1, 7, yeah? then 15. 7 plus 8 is 15. What, what are the coefficients? You have the calculator. 7 combination 0 is 1. 7 combination 1 is 7. 7 combination 2. Give me the coefficients. You have the calculator. You have 7 combination 2. So it means this one is 6. N was not 7, it's 6. So 6 combination 0 is 1. 6 combination 1 is 6. What is 6 combination 2? Our N was 6, not 7. 6 combination 2? 15. 15. 6 combination 3? 6 combination 3? 20. 20. 6 combination 4. 6 combination 6 is 6. 6 combination 7 is, is 1. Are we together? Then you start putting the first one here. We have Z, 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 Z. The second one is positive 1 over Z. Positive 1 over Z is just 1 over Z, isn't it? So here we have 1 over Z, 1 over Z, 1 over Z, 1 over Z. 1 over z, 1 over z, 1 over z. Then you put the power. This fraction, you make it ascending. You make it disappear in the first one, isn't it? So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This other one descends. So you start from the x power 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Are you seeing that? 
So anything raised to power zero is is one, isn't it? Anything raised to power zero is one. Anything raised to power zero is one. Then the ones with the same coefficient. This side we have 64 goes raised to power 6x. The one with the same coefficient, you will see have the same power. So coefficient of 1, coefficient of 1. They will have the same? The same? Power. So you have 1, meaning here you have z raised to power 6. Meaning that other one must be 1 over z raised to power 6. So you can see the sign is positive, there is no negative sign there, isn't it? So it is plus 1 over z raised to power 6. So you dealt with the ones with a coefficient of 1. You are done with this, you are done with that. You move, the ones with a coefficient of 6 must have the same power, isn't it? It means you are joining this with that. Are we together? Are we together? So if you put plus 6 outside, what do you have inside the bracket? z raised to power 5 divided by z, you get z raised to power 4. Meaning this other one must also be 1 over z raised to power 4, isn't it? Because they have the same coefficient. Are we together? So it means it is plus 1 over z raised to power 4 because there is no negative sign there. Are we together? Then you move to the next one. This one is having a coefficient of 15 and a coefficient of 15. So you join them together, isn't it? So it is plus 15 into z raised to power 4 divided by z raised to power 2. See that is z raised to power 2. Meaning the other one must also be 1 over z raised to power 2. You can see everything is positive. There is no negative sign. Negative sign will only arise when you are dealing with a sign. Because sign is having j. So there are cases when you square j, you get negative 1. When you cube j, you get negative j. When you raise j to power 4, you get 1. Are you see? So it is the sign function which will change some of them to negative. Are you see? Are we together? Good. Then you move to the last one. The one without a partner is always the constant term. Are we together? The one without a partner is always the, the constant term. So you can see this when it does not have a partner to join with. So it is a constant term. Meaning z raised to power 3 divided by z raised to power 3 is, is 1. So at the end you remain with, with 20. Because z raised to power 3 divided by z raised to power 3 is 1. So the one which does not have a partner is always the constant. Time, if in case it is there, because many cases it is not there, isn't it? It is only there when n is even. When n is odd, it means everything has a partner. Because you get even number of terms, isn't it? Good. Then you start. Z raised to power 6 plus 1 over Z raised to power 6, meaning when n is 6, Zn plus 1 over Zn, isn't it? So where there is n, you put 6. Z raised to power 6 plus 1 over z raised to power 6. Where there is n, you put 6. That is the same as what? 2 cos 6x. Are you seeing that? It is the same as 2 cos 6x. Then z raised to power 4 plus 1 over z raised to power 4. Where there is n, you put 4. You get 4 cos 2 cos 4x. Are we together? You get 2 cos 2 cos 4x. So it means this is 2 cos 4x. Then here, z raised to power 2 plus 1 over z raised to power 2, where there is n, you put 2. 2, 2, 2. So it means this is the same as 2 cos 2x. Two Are we together? When n is 2, where there is n, you put 2. z squared plus 1 over z squared is the same as 2 cos 2x. Two is it okay? Good. So this one is 2 cos 2x. But what do we want? We want cos raised to power 6x, isn't it? So it means we get rid of 64. It means we divide both sides of the equation by 60. by 60 by 64. So after doing that, you will remain with cos raised to power 6x, which you find to be what? 1 times 2 is 2, divide by 64, you get 1 over 32 cos raised to power cos 6x, isn't it? Are we together? You move to the next one, 6 times 2 is 12. 12 divided by 64, 3 over 16. Then you have cos 4x. Isn't it? Are you using the calculator? 15 times 2 divided by 64, you get 15 over 32. Then cos, cos 2x, isn't it? Are we together there? Then you move to the next one, 20 divided by 64, you get 5 over 
5 over 16. So it means when you have cos raised to power 6x, cos raised to power 6x, you substitute it with this. You no longer have the powers, now you can now integrate it. Are we together? You can now integrate it when it doesn't have a power. So can we now integrate cos raised to power 6x? So cos raised to power 6x is the same as where there is cos raised to power 6x, you put its equivalent value, isn't it? You see this question is also doing, being set independently under complex numbers, isn't it? Because in complex numbers they will tell you to expand cos raised to power 6x, so you can see the method we are using. Are we together? Are we together? Yes. So you see this one is different when someone tells you to expand cos 6x. Cos 6x is different with cos raised to power 6x, meaning this is a different case of the Weber's theorem. Eh? Are we together? Yes. Good. So, where there is cos raised to power 6x puts the value, you get 1 over 32 cos 6x plus 3 over 16 cos cos 4x plus 15 over 32 cos cos 2x plus 5 over 16 then dx. And then you substitute the whole value of cos raised to power 6x. Having done that, you now integrate each and every term independently, isn't it? You integrate each and every term independently. So if you start here, our coefficient is 1 over 32. If you integrate cos, you get positive sign, isn't it? So if you integrate cos, you get sine 6x. Then you divide by the derivative of the inner function. The inner function is 6x. If you differentiate 6x, it must be a constant, doesn't it? You get 6. Are we together? Okay? Then plus, our constant here is 3 over 16. If you integrate cos, you get positive sign. So it is sign 4x. Then you divide by the constant of the inner function, which is the derivative of the inner function. Are we together? Are we together? So if the derivative of the inner function must be a constant, it's like I'm just saying you divide by the constant of the inner function, isn't it? You move on, plus. 15 over 32, if you integrate cos, you get positive sign, so sin 2x, the derivative of the inner function is 2, you divide it with that. Are we together? Then plus, if you integrate 5 over 16, you get 5 over 16x, plus a bit of integration constant. Because 5 over 16, it means x is raised to power 0, that is why x is silent, isn't it? Anything raised to power 0 is? Is 1, so that is a polynomial. So if integrating x raised to power 0, it is 0 plus 1 divided by 0 plus 1, you get x. Are we together? Okay? So the next step is just to simplify 1 over 32 divided by 6. What do you have? 1 over 1 over 192 sine 6x, isn't it? What do you have? Three over sixteen divided by four, you get three over sixty-four sine sine four x. Fifteen over thirty-two divided by two, you get fifteen over sixty-four sine sine two x. Then plus five over sixteen x plus c. You dealt with the indefinite integral accordingly. Are we together? Okay. So that is how to integrate a cosine function raised to a.